going to start from down there. such a big mouth. I overwhelm. Like, we can't hear you. They can't hear you on the live stream. You don't use the mic. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We'd like to begin with a uh, hymn of 437, Since the Day You Found Me. But I would like to say just one thing. Uh, I, I had a real rough week last week. Probably the worst one I've had since I started with the Parkinson's. But something that did me some good there, and I don't know if you read that revival fire. Dennis Cole has an article in there that is titled Troubled Waters Are for Healing. Hmm. Something gets through it. Hmm. Amen. Amen. Sometimes. Yeah. I don't know if you realize how blessed you are just to be able to come in and walk in and sit down and stand up. Uh, I've been having a hard time just getting out of the chair. But trouble the waters are for healing. And if you can just let the Lord work on you through that article, if you will. Amen. And I look forward to Brother Coral coming and being with us. Amen. So now we're going to get everybody on the same page. You know what? There's nothing God can't do when we swing by the open door, when we're in spiritual unity, and we ask God to do something in our presence. So let's make it easy on the pastor, get our hearts all thinking the right way, get all going the right way together. When he gets up, it'll be like sled down here. Amen. All right? I like it. 437. Since the day we found it. Since the Savior found me, pardoned all my sins, I have had the joy and living hope of men. God is all the shame and from the past. And beneath the precious blood of Christ at last. Say, 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 I'm happy all the way. Say, 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 I love you for each day. Say, 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 I know he's mighty child. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. Since the Savior found me, all to him I owe. For his precious blood has washed me like snow. Fellow congregation, happy as can be. I'm glad that Jesus justifies and sets me free. Say, 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 I'm happy all the way. Say, 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 I love the Lord each day. Say, 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 I know. Come on. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Well, one of the things I was listening, I was thinking about you, Brother Colton Beadle. I, there was a fellow, uh, you may be seated, there was a, a guest on one of the programs, uh, WMT programs, and it was uh, about Parkinson's. And a lady was being uh, interviewed. She apparently had wrote a book about her journey with uh, Parkinson's, and she was just describing different things that she was doing to help, uh, you know, combat it. And one of the things she said that uh, exercise, she, she was... Uh, getting out and, and doing some walking and, and, and that sort of thing. And, of course, there's medication, as you well know. And, and she was very upbeat, optimistic about, you know, what she had been, you know, going through. And now that she said, I'm going to live as productive as I can, even though I've been diagnosed with Parkinson's. And right now there's no cure for it. And it, of course, attacks your joints and your mobility and, and challenges you in that area, and then so I guess that's one way she was describing it. So I was, I was thinking about you, and man, look, I tell you, if you lead singing like that, man, that's going to help, huh? That's good therapy right there. It's just leading that singing and moving, keeping mobile, and yeah, absolutely. Well, you are good. You are good for more than something. All right, you're. Uh, Precious child of God, amen, and I appreciate the gift of your enthusiasm and your joy uh, for the Lord, and I do appreciate that uh, very much. Well, welcome to Sunday School. Thank you for being uh, here with us on this beautiful Sunday morning. I tell you, uh, it is a beautiful day. Brother Teeny and I had the good privilege to pick up Brother and Sister Deason uh, this morning, and we were talking about the weather, talking about the good day that uh, we were having, and it is. I mean, we wait uh, 364 days out of the year to be able to have one of these, and so uh, we, we take it and we enjoy it as much as we can. We squeeze every bit of it uh, that we can out. Now, I felt a little warm in here, not to alarm anyone or concern or try to get somebody thinking otherwise, but I just felt a little bit warm when I was up here on the platform, and so I was concerned. I'm sorry, it's yeah, coming up. Okay. 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 It's going to even out. Okay. Yeah. It's just that technology. It, you know, it's got one of those smart smart com computers and it, it kind of moves around here yonder and everywhere so I was just I mean I'm fine I mean I, I, I you know I will go either way but I didn't want you guys to be uh, feeling too much pressure there too much heat or being uncomfortable generally we don't have a problem with people being too warm the men never the ladies seemingly but uh, you know it doesn't matter how cold it is, Brother Marvin sweats, and no matter how warm it is, Miss Anita still needs three layers. And uh, so it, uh, we, it's just the way it is, and so we'll work around it the best we can. I uh, did have a, a good uh, experience there in uh, Salisbury last week. Appreciate your prayers, and also uh, gratitude to Brother JJ for taking care of Sunday school for us and the morning service and the evening service. Certainly appreciate that. We did have uh, some good services while we were there in Salisbury and helping with that event and seeing our dear friend uh, Pastor Purdue and continue to pray for him, pray for their church as they uh, continue the process of, of uh, getting a pastor. Uh, Victory and Grace is actually going to uh, vote on a pastor today who has been there and has candidated and uh, he is just uh, now uh, today uh, being, being considered as an official candidate and they will vote and so we'll let you know what the results uh, are from that as we know them. I did speak with Brother Tullis earlier in the week and he was sure uh, looking forward to today and looking to getting this behind them so that they can move uh, forward. And, and I know that 
that'd be a heavy, heavy load lifted off of his shoulders because he's carried quite a bit. number of things uh, on the prayer call last night, uh, Miss Regina's niece as well as her sister, we need to keep in prayer. Uh, we had little baby Emmett. Uh, this is, a, I think, a great nephew of Brother Chris Carroll, uh, Miss Dora Carroll. Uh, the little child was born uh, just 12 days ago, I believe, 13 days ago, 1st of April, and he was born with a congestive congenital heart defects, and so they've already had open heart surgery on him. And, of course, there are a, a number of other uh, maladies that he has, and certainly uh, not out of the woods by a long shot. You need to pray for Emmett. His mom and dad are young, uh, just really newly married. Uh, this is their first child, and it's my understanding that they're not folks that, uh, you know, attend church regularly. Uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if they even profess faith in Christ. I know Ms. Dora is really concerned about that, so uh, need to pray for, for that family. And then, of course, um, Israel, as many of you are aware of the attacks uh, from Iran uh, over, the, uh, over the night. Uh, Caleb uh, Edwards is over in Israel. He and his wife, Joanna, uh, or somewhere up in the northern uh, region, up around the Golan Heights and the uh, Upper Galilee. That's where they have been uh, working the last few days. And they're, of course, embedded with different families, the kibbutzims, uh, the communities taking shelter in, uh, in the bomb shelters, as, as many of the Israelis do frequently. Uh, of course, they're not out of the woods by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, it was good to see the United States and Great Britain and France and even Jordan and possibly Egypt uh, uh, participating in uh, shooting down uh, the drones that had been sent uh, from Iran, uh, unprecedented and it looks like, according to reports I've received and some that have been announced, that 99% of those drones were intercepted, which is incredible when you think about that. Now, they have the Iron Dome. They've got uh, David Sling. They've got uh, you know, other devices that are in place to help protect them. Of course, you've got the Air Force from the different countries that we already mentioned. You've got the Navy off the shore. So there, there are several uh, bands of security that have been prepared uh, for this, uh, this, this event that had taken place. But uh, by no stretch of the imagination are they out of any danger. You've got to remember that just north of the border in Syria, they have an estimated 150,000 uh, ballistic missiles, both short range and long range, aimed at Israel right now. So, and that's been, you know, that that's been ongoing now for a long time. Uh, so. It's unsure exactly what is going to you know, transpire in the next little bit of time. I don't know if they're just poking the bear to see what kind of reaction Israel is going to uh, take with what is, what, is, what is done. And it'll be interesting, I guess, to see where these different countries align after uh, this initial wave of activity is over with. So we'll do our best, uh, Brother uh, Sharp and Brother Way and Brother Caleb or men that we uh, support and or at different times over in Israel doing different things, trying to provide protective gear, being an encouragement, uh, being a witness, uh, spreading the, the word of God, uh, giving information about what it means to be uh, a believer, a true believer in Christ, and 
And that in itself is a challenge, uh, as, as you well know, but they're making uh, every effort that they can uh, to, to be our representatives over there uh, for uh, the gospel's sake. And we, we know that many of the Israelis are appreciative of what uh, they are doing uh, as far as standing beside them in terms of friendship. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily equate unto their salvation, okay? And so we just need to continue to, to pray uh, for them that eyes would be open and that uh, the Lord Jesus would be uh, received and, and that comprehension uh, would be uh, understood and faith placed in uh, Jesus Christ. So a lot, of, a lot of things we need to do, we need to continue to pray. I know... I was, several of you had either texted me or contacted me and told me of your concerns and your prayers and things that you had learned, and certainly we appreciate those, and as we find out uh, things, we'll try to pass them along to you as well. Why don't we take a moment and just uh, pray, and I pray for our class, and pray for our country, pray for those in harm's way, uh, even as we speak, and pray that uh, our, our military efforts would be successful in dwarfing these continued attacks. Uh, we need to uh, also pray that Israel can eradicate uh, Hamas, who is a continual threat uh, to their existence, as is Hezbollah and Fatah and, and uh, the PLO or the remnants of that. Uh, they are surrounded uh, by their enemies uh, that hate them, hate God, and make no mistake, they hate you too. Uh, you know, they call little, they call Israel little Satan, and they call the United States big Satan. So don't don't be misled by our the protesters in in, in our country that are advocating from the river to the sea, and uh, all of the sympathizers. Of, of terrorism, uh, don't, don't be disillusioned by that one bit, and um, it, it, it's a real, real present danger. Well, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we again come to you in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for salvation. Thank you for the Bible, for church. Thank you that we can have the assurance of salvation and know it is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We do pray for each other here today. We pray for those in our congregation that uh, are afflicted with illness. I think of Miss Juanita Young uh, this morning in the hospital, and we pray for her and ask you to lift her up. I think of Miss Whitlatch. I pray for her. I think of Bob Collins. Pray for him. Uh, thank you for Brother Coton Beetle being here this morning, and we lift him up and ask you continued. Uh, watch care over him as he battles Parkinson's disease. I do pray for Regina's sister, Alicia, and her niece that is uh, with this mass on her kidney. And we pray, Lord, for that uh, young one to uh, experience the healing grace of God. Uh, we pray, Lord, for Israel today. And we, we know that these are our friends and we're... Uh, in the word instructed uh, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and Lord understanding that that peace uh, only comes through salvation in you Father and I pray that uh, souls would be saved even amidst this hardship and difficulty Lord I pray for your watch care and your protection upon that dear people against the adversaries that are set to their destruction I pray that those uh, weapons of warfare that were intended to bring them harm will uh, be, uh, be thwarted, uh, and, and may their enemies uh, experience what you intended for them. Lord, we uh, know that you're capable of confounding uh, the wisdom of men, and Lord, we uh, just pray uh, God, for our, our military, our troops uh, that are in harm's way, I think of Caleb and his wife Joanna uh, in Israel and just trying to be a, a representative of, of Christ there, a light, a testimony. And I pray for their safety and for those that 
or with them. And Lord, we again just trust you, Lord, to, to deliver and protect uh, our friends. God bless our service, our time in Sunday school. And Lord, we'll thank you for all you do in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, this morning, we're going to go back to the book of Colossians for just a little bit. And we're in Colossians chapter number 2. And we're going to focus on verses 6 through the rest of the chapter. I'm not sure if we'll uh, hit everything in chapter 2 that perhaps you would like for us to hit. But we want to dive into uh, Colossians chapter 2. And I want to begin reading in uh, verse 1. And then we'll skip down to verse 6 and get into our lesson for this morning. And the idea behind lesson six is Paul encourages Christians to walk, to root, and to be built up in Christ. And I'll do my best to try to explain what I mean by that. Uh, But we read in verse number one, for I would that you knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Now verse 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily." And ye are complete in Him, which is the head of all principalities and powers. And we want to stop reading there. We'll refer to some other verses of Scripture here in chapter 2. But uh, we wanted to point out uh, by way of introduction that Paul had addressed the various conflicts that these Colossian believers had been uh, engaged uh, in. And many of these came from... Uh, the Epicureans, the Stoics, the philosophers of that particular day that were questioning the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and His authority. There was this question as to whether or not uh, you know, salvation uh, is complete in Christ or that He is the Son of God as uh, the Scripture uh, teaches and as He Himself declared. And so Paul is writing to ease their mind, to settle whatever disputes that may have arisen concerning this. And so he writes to give them assurance. Now it's clear that Paul had not personally visited this congregation, but this congregation came about as a result of one of his many converts uh, who had trusted Christ and were discipled and later themselves went and established churches uh, as, uh, as disciples are to do. And so uh, Paul is writing uh, to this church and giving them assurances and giving them encouragement and really pointing out that they haven't missed anything. Uh, that I'll say it once, I'll probably say it again, that all you need you have in Christ Jesus for matters of of faith and practice, and for that matter, in anything. Christ is all you need. You're not missing out on anything. There's nothing else that you need to reach after. Your salvation is firmly set in Christ Jesus. And so Paul is encouraging them to walk in this faith. First, you must be established, okay? You must settle the matter of salvation. And then once this matter of salvation is settled, which, by the way, is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, plus nothing minus nothing. It's not of works of righteousness, which we have done, 
Okay, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Make no mistake, salvation is in the person of Christ. All you need, you'll find in Him. All right, so once that is settled, we find that we are to walk and to be rooted and then built up in Christ. Uh, That's really what Paul is emphasizing here in chapter 2. Now, Paul is always practical. He says in verse number 6 that we simply are to live out what we have come to believe. Just as Christ is received by faith, the Christian is to walk, and that means to live by faith, acknowledging the lordship of Christ over his life. He writes something similar in Philippians chapter 2. If I could have you turn there for just a moment, we'll take a look at that verse of Scripture. In Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 12, he writes, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, Paul is not advocating one works for their salvation. What he is saying is the salvation that you have within, you need to work out. Okay? It needs to work. What's inside needs to work outside. Okay? So, in 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 other words, people can't see what's inside you, but they can see how you behave. They can see the decisions that you make, they can, they can look at the actions of your life. And so Paul is saying as a Christian, you say uh, that you have faith and that's wonderful, but let that faith be seen by obedience to Christ in an outward demonstration of obedience. And so a sense, in a sense, that is what he's saying. So press forward in faith is what Paul is admonishing here in chapter 2. To walk, to root, and to be built up in Christ means our walk in our life lines up with our belief. Now I asked the question in the lesson, would you not agree that it is sad when a Christian believes in Christ and acts like the devil? Now sure, you know that to be true. I mean, Good night. We often hear one of the reasons and excuses for people not attending church is there are too many hypocrites in the church, right? And what essentially they're saying is people say one thing and do another. And we all battle with that. There's not a one of us that hasn't been hypocritical to some degree or another, okay? We haven't always said, done, and been everything that we should be. Do I get an amen? Now, if you have, then let me come and sign your Bible, okay? Uh, because we're, we're, we're none of us without our faults and our shortcomings and our sin. And uh, we understand that. But uh, we ought to do our best as uh, Christians to live out the faith that we profess. Amen. All right? And so nothing upsets uh, or demoralizes the testimony Uh, more than saying one thing and doing another thing. And so as Christians, we ought to act and behave and carry ourselves as the Lord would, uh, as the Lord uh, did and does, okay? Uh, So if we've received Christ, let us walk as He walked. A good example is found in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. I won't have you turn there, but just as a reference, you can see that. If we have been rooted in Him, let us grow up in Him. If we have been found in Him, let us be built on Him. Okay, Walking expresses life. Growing exhibits an inner power. Okay? Uh, That's the Holy Spirit working in you that brings about spiritual growth, okay? And uh, we see that building up shows progress of character until the structure is complete. Now, when is the structure going to be complete? When the Lord comes, okay? So we are a continual work in progress. We should be walking, simply living by faith. That means trusting the Lord, obeying His 
uh, word, okay, uh, seeking to fulfill His will, uh, that, is, uh, that is walking, uh, rooted, to being rooted means that we're, uh, we're, we're growing in our faith. And we'll, we'll look at some things here in a moment that will help us to be able to uh, root or establish. You know, it's like when you plant. I, I was yesterday, uh, Levi, Titus, and I were knocking some doors, and Brother Andy and Brother Steve were across the street from us. And as we were headed down the door the road, uh, I knocked on a door, and on the stoop there was, a, was about six uh, tomato plants. And I was telling the boys, I said, man, spring is, is arrived. I said, look at there, there's some tomato plants. These folks are getting ready to start gardening. I said, that's, that's encouraging. I had planted some tomato plants last year. Didn't do a whole lot. You know, for uh, used to, I'd, I'd pinch the suckers and I'd do all kinds of stuff that I read about would, you know, you should do in order to get, you know, better or bigger tomatoes. I didn't do anything. I just planted them and gave them miracle grow. And I just let them bush, you know, out and it looked like a jungle. But I tell you what, those were some of the best tomatoes that I had ever seen, all right? And uh, they actually uh, survived, and, and so I, this year, I think the less I, have, the less I interfere with, the better they're going to be. If I just let the Lord take care of them, uh, there's a message there, all right? We try to pinch and pick and, and manipulate, and it doesn't work, and the Lord says, get out of the way, let me show you how it's done, and... So anyway, but the point, I, I was looking at those tomatoes and I said, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, you put those tomatoes in the ground. I mean, they're, they're rooted, okay, but, but what do we wait for them to do? We wait for them to establish themselves, right? And that means that they're going into the, they're going into the ground and then as they're there and growing and watered, those roots begin to spread out. And, and they begin to establish themselves. And, and so in, in Christ, we have the, the root, the, we have the beginning of, of salvation. But that's not the end, all right? Those roots are to, to spring forth and establish. And as those roots become established, you know what? They begin to bear fruit, okay? So in order to have the proper fruit, you must have the proper root, right? And once that root is established, then you can begin to see the fruit develop from that. And so uh, that's, a, that's a, good, uh, a good thing to consider. And then, then built up, built up uh, and into this uh, complete uh, or mature uh, believer. And that won't be uh, all the way done until uh, we see Christ. But uh, what, a, what, a, what a wonderful thought. Paul longed for Christians to be established and kept firm in their convictions so that the philosophers and legalists of their day would not be able to deceive them. Verse number 8, he gives us uh, this warning uh, there in verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. And there were, they were making the attempt to add to, uh, you know, and take away. Uh, they were coming up with their various traditions, and uh, these were, of course, hindering their faith and growth. The best way to be protected from the snares of the world is to have an understanding of the perfection of Christ. And that's seen in verse 9 and 10 where we read, and I'll say it again, all you need, you have in Christ. For in Him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead, verse 9, bodily, and you are complete in Him, which is the head of all principalities and power. And so um, we see that in Christ is that perfection. The truth that Paul is emphasizing here in chapter 2 is Christ is all you need for salvation, for assurance, for sound doctrine, and to experience fullness of joy. And we find in Christ all sufficient, or all sufficiency. 
Well, I pointed out some keys to walking, being rooted, and built up in Christ. Now, they're not all listed for us here in Colossians. I think that they certainly can be applied, but I've taken the time uh, to uh, give you some verses as references to uh, validate the point. Uh, Five things. I'll go quickly because time is escaping me. Number one, attach yourself to the Word of God. If we're going to be rooted and built up in Christ, we must attach ourselves to the Word of God. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 16, we read, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, that's mature, truly furnished unto all good works. So if we're going to be established, if we're going to be rooted, then we must attach ourselves to the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The psalmist said, The Word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We must see the connection between our, uh, our spiritual walk and our time in the Word of God. It cannot be uh, uh, stated enough. Number two, add scriptural essentials to your faith. Add Christian essentials, or you might say virtues, uh, to your faith. And for this, uh, we're going to look outside the book of Colossians to 2 Peter uh, chapter number uh, two, I believe it, or uh, let me see, Second Peter, uh, actually it's chapter 1, Second Peter chapter 1, I have two there, but it's Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3 and following. Now these are the essentials or the virtues that we are to add to our faith. According as His divine uh, power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto godliness, or excuse me, unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Okay, so he's talking about how we can obtain victory, how that we can overcome uh, the lust of the world, the pride of life, and so forth. So he says, all right, you established that you are saved. You have faith in God. That's been, you've been firmly rooted in Christ. Now, to that faith, add these particular essentials or virtues. He says, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. So there are a lot of different things that we can add to that faith that can make us uh, more productive and bring about more uh, fruit in our life and an established a testimony that, uh, uh, is, uh, that glorifies the Lord. It says in verse 8, For if these things be in you and abound... They flourish, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So remember, the root needs to be established, and as that root is established, then it can bring forth fruit. So if we're adding these these elements in, in our life, it's simply enabling us to be rooted and built up in Jesus, and the result is fruitfulness. Verse 9 says, But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. So we, we see both the, the positive result of obedience and we see the negative that results from disobedience. Okay? So if we want to be walking and rooted and built up in Christ, we need to add these essentials or virtues to our faith. Number three, addict yourself to the ministry of Christ. Now, we're familiar with addictions. Uh, They're all around us. People have different kinds of addictions. 
Well, Paul spoke of an addiction that would be very helpful uh, to you and to the cause of Christ. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 15, he says, I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the firstfruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints, that ye submit yourself unto such and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. And so one of the ways in which that faith of ours can, uh, can be rooted and built up is if we see the, uh, the, the importance of serving the Lord, addicting ourselves to uh, the ministry. And what would that mean? Well, it would be serving the Lord, but it's also serving others. You know, Jesus said of Himself that uh, He came uh, to, to, uh, to minister, all right? Uh, to, to be a, a servant, and in like manner, we should follow His example. Number four, align yourself with the people of God. Now, Ruth 15 there, we are familiar with Ruth determining that uh, she was going to go with Naomi, and Naomi's people were going to be her people, and Naomi's God was going to be her God. She was aligning herself with the, the, the people of God, with this person, of God, which is Naomi, and we need to do the same if we're going to be established and built up. We need to align ourselves with the people of faith. Hebrews 10, 25, we've talked about that this past month when we were encouraging church attendance and being faithful to the house of God. In Hebrews chapter 10, we're admonished not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as believers and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And those that are aligned with God, built up, rooted, are going to uh, be in fellowship with people of like faith. And then number five, we are to ask God for wisdom. James 1, 5 teaches us that if we ask God, He will supply Wisdom comes from God. Wisdom comes from the Word of God. Wisdom comes from seeking wise counsel from those that walk with God. And we could go on and on. But if we're going to walk, be rooted up, and built up in Christ, it is essential that we attach ourselves to the Word of God, that we add the scriptural virtues to our faith that are outlined in Scripture, that we addict ourselves or, or, or become involved in the ministry of Christ, which is winning souls, serving uh, others, uh, ministering to the local church, aligning ourselves with the people of God, and then certainly asking for wisdom. Now, is, is doing these things going to be a cure-all to the problems that the world presents? Absolutely not. And so we include a few things here, a couple of helps for combating worldly opposition. And that's exactly what these people were up against, uh, the uh, philosophers, the street uh, you know, preachers of that day that were espousing uh, the, 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 the virtues of, or I should say, the, uh, uh, that were... Uh, involved in, in uh, as I said, the, the Stoic, the Essene, the, the uh, uh, what was it? Epicureans. Epicureans, thank you. That was the word. Who, was, who said that? Brother Sergeant, thank you. How you could read my mind, that's exactly where I was going with that. But I appreciate it. Thank you. You knew it was right on the tip of my tongue. Okay, so remember what Christ has done for you. If you look at uh, verses 11 through Uh, 14 in Colossians chapter 2, you'll find exactly what the... Man, this this should really excite you when you think about it. In verse 11, it says, "...in whom also you are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with Him in baptism, where also you are raised with Him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised Him from the dead." And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. 
And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them open, openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. All right, here's, here's the, the point. If we'll remember what Christ has done for us, all of those different things that these uh, philosophers were trying to instill in these people, Paul is saying, look, Christ nailed those things to the cross. There are no special days or there are no traditions in which you can uh, keep that's going to make you spiritual. Christ supplied salvation through himself and you can rest in the fact that your salvation is settled in Christ. Remember what he's done for you. And then the second thing is remember true spirituality comes not from false humility, worship of angels or self-helps, but rather holding to Christ the head of his body. And verse 19 says, And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands have nourished, ministered and knit together, increased with the increase of God. So contrary to what they were advocating, Paul is saying, you hold to Christ. You hold to the head, the head of the body, which is Christ. Now, a summary of chapter 2 is the Christian life begins with salvation, continues to grow through an obedient walk, and as we need to be rooted and built up in faith, it is found in Christ. And we can conclude by noting that Paul encouraged the Christians to go onward and upward with Christ. The higher you go with the Lord, the steadier your disposition, the less disturbing are temptations, and the greater contentment in Christ you will enjoy. And so that's what we can take away from chapter 2. All I have is in Christ. All I need is in Christ. We sing that chorus, Christ is all I need, Christ is all I need. And it is so true. It is so true. Don't let the world or the philosophers of this world or the uh, quote-unquote elite of this world tell you otherwise. Paul was very practical and straightforward in his uh, proclamation of how faith is established, how it is rooted, and how it is built up. And our sufficiency is in Christ. Again, I say he is all I need and he's all that you need. And so he's settling that. And so we'll pick up in chapter 3 and talk a little bit about uh, some other things that Paul points out uh, to these uh, believers in Colossae. Colossae. Let's stand together for a little bit and uh, let's pray and we'll get ready to uh, for the next service, okay? Heavenly Father, thank you again for the word. We pray that as we look uh, to the scripture, that it would encourage us and give us understanding to the establishment of our faith. May we be built up in that faith and fruitful as you desire us to be. In Jesus' name, amen.